What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome, welcome. 2022, uh, season three, we are back. 21 questions. Uh, if you've never, ever been a part of 21 questions, this is our weekly uh, Insta Live that we do with guests. We unpack their stories and just get to know them a bit more. All right. And so we also encourage you to ask your questions uh, in the chat below. Uh, 2022, we're back with our first live event on the 1st of March. So if you want to join us, Feel free, we're going to be having a sit down with Shola Amma, the legendary songstress Shola Amma. Um, and you can do that through the link in our bio, www.thesitdownuk.com. All right. Um, let me know how you guys are feeling in the comment section. Give me an emoji that describes how you're feeling right about now. Some jazz kind of music going on. All right, who we got in the building? Big up Samuel in the building. Let me get this hooked up. Okay. Cool. All right, Sam, you know what? I'm going to come straight over to you, brother. Hope you are well. Looking forward to this evening. What's up, bro? What is happening? What's happening? How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, man. How are you today? Not bad, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's a semi-productive day. A I, love the, I love this setup you've got. It's, it's executive looking. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. I have to get ready oh. for you, you know. You get me, you're coming to interview me, so I have to be ready. I'm not used to being in this position, so it's different it, for me, bro. Yeah, how does it feel? Um, It's nice. It's always a nice feeling. I feel like when someone takes the time out to um. Uh, you know, just find out more about a person and an individual, 100%. no matter what field they're in, obviously yeah. there must be a certain importance and their impact must be 100%. happening in some way or, do you know what I mean? So they yeah. must be doing something right. So, exactly. Yeah. And you are, you are. You know what, what happened was I saw you on uh, on the Mobos doing the carpet. Yeah. And I just thought, Samuel, look how far he's going. Do you know what I'm saying? It's amazing <laughs> to see, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, God's amazing, man. God is amazing. I just thought, look, let me get you on. Um, so the way 21 questions works, you've got 21 questions or more, you've got one pass card. So if there's a question you don't want to answer, Ooh. you can use your pass card. However, okay. Okay. in the 60 plus episodes we've had, only one person's ever used their pass card. Ooh, who was that? <laughs> oh my gosh, who was that? That was um, what's that? Sheila Nortley. Okay. Yeah, Sheila Nortley. Uh, oh, big up Sheila. The, you know, you know Sheila? I know of her. I got, okay. um, well, a Christian is who I know her through, isn't it? So he's, okay, he's, that's okay. my boy. He's in the chat right now, so yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, we'll see how we go on. But first, I'm going to start off with your quick fire round. As the questions come, give the answers from the top of your head. Don't think about them too much. Let's see what you come cool. up with. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. All right. Um, what's your favourite Graham Norton interview? Oh, bro, <laughs> Graham Norton. Oh, um, I think it has to be the one with. Oh, I can't even think about. There's so many, bro. Are oh, you putting me on the spot? I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a, a, a sudden recent one. I, I believe when he had Jason Momoa on. Okay, so that was a good interview. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was just great to hit, see him on there. And of course, I forgot her name. She's obviously Daenerys Targaryen. But I forgot her real name, which is, um, I think it's Emily Clark. Amelia Clark. That that was an interview. That was really really good. Cool. All right. Um, he said Graham Norton. When, you know, that's my guy as well. <laughs> that's your guy. Yeah. Um, yeah that's okay. Finish this sentence. I feel the most confident when I'm in a room full of people. Okay. Yeah. And do you have to be doing any particular role? Um, not particularly, hmm. but I, I always get a thrive off a live audience. Yes, yes, I hear that. I, I feel like that. there's something so unique and so profound and so authentic about being in front of an audience. Trust I think for me, I, I think one of the biggest, scariest things that people would ever do is public speaking, but I've never, that fear of, that fear of public speaking has always just encouraged me to be more bold, to be fair, because I feel like yes. that's crazy. Like, I can just imagine myself full of 
a room full of people. And yeah, I think those, those are really like telling points in anyone's yeah. career. Because to be able to do that, you must have some effing balls. Bro. Like, <laughs> it's not an easy job to it's do, not. bro. It's, it's not. not. It's not. I hear what you're saying. I, yeah, because we do our shows and our events, and it's like, um, once I get in the mic, before I get the mic, I might be, mm. but once I touch the mic, I'm like, that's it, because you can't yeah. tell me my the mic amplifies my voice, so yeah, yeah. I got the power right now. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just yeah. Feel, you feel in control. Um, what's your most memorable holiday and why? I remember the time I went to LA. Uh, the time I went to LA group of friends, we went to Coachella and I saw Beyonce live. That has to be the most memorable. I love concerts. I love music concerts. I love festivals. Yeah. Um, that's me. Like, obviously, I, I like to see the essence of when I've listened to an artist, whether it be on SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, and then yeah. get to see them perform live and they kind of match that credibility yes. that I have in them yes. when I hear them and what their song has done to me. When I can see that on stage portrayed live in front of me, I think it's the best feeling. I think wow. I oh, took away from that for sure. And I got to see Queen B, and that just made so much sense because I never got to see Michael Jackson. I saw Prince. Michael. Do you, know what I mean? you saw Michael? Yeah, oh, yeah. Lucky, I, I envy you, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, I never got to see people. And obviously, I saw Chris Brown briefly at Whiskey. But you know what I mean? Those people that really have like a catalogue of music. Mm. Yeah, I think Beyonce is the only one left, really. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Her and Kanye West and Drake. I've seen Drake yeah. before, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did Drake yeah. match your match your uh, expectations? As a performer, no, he's not really the best, you know. Hmm. I think I think Drake has I think the the credible thing about Drake, Drake has so many bangers, he doesn't really have to perform. And that's yeah, the yeah. most annoying thing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you've got so much slackers, the audience can do it for you. Yeah. And you can just Yeah, you know I mean. He yeah. does do like he does move around on stage. He does give his energy. I like his dress sense and stuff like that. But I feel like as a performer, he doesn't. His performance doesn't really be the most memorable for me yeah. because he's yeah. got so much bangers. So it's kind of hard. Facts, yeah. facts, facts, facts. Um, how do you behave as a person? How do you behave when you're stressed? You're stressed out. Oh, that's a good question. Do you know what? Yeah. In all honesty, if I. If I if I don't go for a walk or listen to music, I fall up, I phone up one of my brothers, man. So Ola's in the chat right now. Or I phone Coyote or Ben or CJ or anyone that's closest to me, like proper even my cousin Solo, he's in he's in the chat right now. If I'm stressed, Solo probably hears it the most. I'll vent to him proper. And that's mm. that's my cousin, isn't it? So ultimately that's that's how I really get over stress because you need someone that's not feeling what you're feeling right now to kind of give you that level headedness. And just yeah. come at it from a different perspective of whatever True. it is you're feeling at the moment. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I, it always, it always does the job for me. It always does the job. Always. Nice, nice. Um, what matters to you most in a relationship? Defining relationship. Uh, romantic. Romantic. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Honesty, transparency. That's the number one key thing for me. Because I'm gonna be honest. Even yeah. if it's at a detriment to myself, I'm gonna be honest, man. Honest. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, yeah, a purchase. Man. Tell me about a purchase you regret. A regret? Ooh. Something hanging in your closet or sitting in your closet that you're like... It's what? not in my closet anymore. Yeah. But I went Bista Village <sighs> and I bought a Gucci belt, <laughs> Prada shoes. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's the biggest waste of money. I just wanted to flex them times. But it weren't really worth it, man. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like... <laughs> yeah, where were you, man? Yeah, but that was when I had the Gucci belt. I felt like I was the man because it was yeah, such yeah. a theme them times. Like everyone was rocking Gucci them times, and I was just like, nah, it weren't really the one for me, man. I threw it. I kid you not, I probably wore it four times because you can't yeah. wear it on a regular basis. When you're stepping out, you got to step out. Yeah, yeah. But then when you're wearing a suit, you ain't gonna tuck in your shirt because of the belt. It looked, it just looks stupid. It just looks stupid, and I just did it for yeah. that. It just, it was dumb. It was dumb. Yeah, dumb. facts, facts. Uh, this song's going to be a hard one, but if you can, mm. one of your favourite interviews that you've done, that when you, even when you look back on it, you're like, yeah. I had a, I had a feeling he was going to ask me this, you know? <laughs> I had a feeling he was going to ask me this. I'm not going to lie to you, my favourite interview was probably my worst interview. Hmm. I'll tell you why. 
um, it was with Tory Lanez. And I probably was in, I was in a room with Tory Lanez for about seven, eight minutes. But that was probably the toughest seven, eight minutes because he was not giving me nothing. And that's the first person I've ever encountered where Damn. the energy was not reciprocated. Like, if you see my interviews, I'm, I'm coming with facts. I'm coming with bands. I'm coming with rapport. Like, you vibe. I break down that show and, and you open up. Mm-hmm. Tory wasn't <laughs> not having it. And it was... <laughs> I ended the interview early because I was like, wow. bro, you're not really giving me anything, so I might as well dip. But mm. then a good friend of mine was like, use the time that you have with an individual and just just see it to the end, see it through to the end. Because I had about, what, 15 minutes with him? I cut mm. the interview around nine minutes because I was like, you're not really giving me anything. But the reason why I learned so much about that is that you can't let someone else's um, energy affect what you need to do, what's most sure. important at that time. And the importance of was getting the essence of that interview and answering the questions and not to say he wasn't answering I just didn't really feel his energy at the time and I was just it was throwing me off completely so yeah I would say that was probably my favourite because I learned a lot more about it to be fair I love that man I love that yeah. um, a few more um, last time you treated yourself ooh bro when was the last time I treated myself um I bought two daily paper tracksuits Come I'm on. a tracksuit guy. I love tracksuits. I love comfortability. Um, yeah. But um, before, I think I was doing something the time Daily People was doing their opening in London. And I know that I think my friend was DJing as well at the time, but I couldn't make it on the night. Mm. But I've always seen Daily People around. And I just like how they just infuse everything. And I just like how they dress it. So I thought, let me go down there, check a feel, like, have a feel of their material. And I know I had some important events coming to that I needed to attend whether it be a music event, concert, or my friend was launching something or whatever. And I just thought, you know, let me just slap down this money for these tracksuits because we couldn't really go anywhere. That was literally travel money. Like, Daily Paper was not cheap. That was definitely travel money. And then some. So I was like, yeah, cool. Let me just do it. I'll just buy myself Daily Paper. And that was that was a nice gift to myself. Sure. Nice. Good. Uh, let me say, last one I want to ask you is, what's your social media pet peeve? Um, The fact that it seems like we have to chase an ongoing cycle of algorithms that consistently change in order to earn a following. Jeez, and I feel like for me, if your content is authentic and it's beautiful to see and watch, the following will come. But mm. let's be fair, these brands, these corporations, they care about the numbers game, innit? Um, but you just got to play the game, man. The game's mm. the game, innit? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's the game. And all I can do is just be me and just keep co- um, putting out content that I feel like I hope People just lack and love, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I actually want to ask you this one, actually. What, what's a constant, a constant prayer that you pray? Something that is re- always in your prayers? I'll say grace. To have grace. I think grace is very important because you're going to make mistakes. Mm. You might offend people unintentionally. Relationships break up. It might end sour. Um... Do you know what I mean? You might just have a bust up with your siblings, like your sister, your mum. Do you know what I mean? Do, do, no one goes through life smoothly, like, do you know what I'm trying to say? So I'd say grace, just allow yourself grace to give yourself room that, okay, if you, was, if you messed up, acknowledge that and don't be, don't be too, don't have your ego in a way to just apologise. It might mean so much the world to them, but little to you. But True. do you know what I mean? Like, put yourself in their shoes. If Would you talk to them in the way that you... Spoken, do you know what I'm trying to say? So I just feel like mm-hmm. having grace for yourself Definitely. and for other people. Do you know what I mean? 100%, man. Um, let's take it back to the beginning. Mm, um, okay. Give me one of your fondest memories as a, as a child. As a child? Something that you look um, back on and it just it makes you smile. Um, how tight-knit my family was. Mm. Very tight-knit. When we were younger, um, all our cousins would be together. Like, we was... We was always together come Christmas, Easter, whatever it might be, or sometimes a couple weekends. Like I remember, I'm not sure, I don't know where you're from, but in Hackney, we've, there was this iconic like um, swimming pool place called Britannia. Um, yeah. And yeah, we would just go there just to swim. And I, from young, I just learned how to swim because we would go there like every other weekend and all of our cousins would just come and make it a thing. And just, yeah, just family gatherings. Like I miss that because as you get older, you have a lot more responsibility. You've got less time to spend with family. Um, 
and you just kind of realise that the, the way you navigate through life. So yeah, that would definitely probably be one of my funnest yeah. moments for sure. Love it. Um, and a painful memory. Painful memory. Mm. Oh. I think a painful memory would have to be... <sighs> That's a tough one. Um... I think a painful memory is probably not being able to always provide for my family the way I would want to. Mm. I think there's a bar that um, Dave, who's one of my favourite, well, the favourite rapper for me anyway in the UK, um, called Screw, there's a song called Screwface Capital. And he says, um, tell me what you know about your mum crying out saying, son, I can't make it, staring down at a handful of bills knowing that you can't take it and he's looking in the mirror crying. And I, I empathise with that phrase so much because yeah. it's such a real honest honest and vulnerable moment and being like, mm. I hear where you're coming from, bro, because I've been in that same position. So I think that's a painful memory because I feel like that's probably the reason why we work twice as hard. We um, do more. Like I think being black, you have to work twice as hard. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And you have to go above and beyond to show that you're excellent or to quote unquote match your peers that do the same thing as you do. So I think that's always going to be a constant memory. And it's always going to be a reminder, even when I make it to the level and the heights that I have made it on. So, yeah, it's always going to be a reminder to be like, yeah, remember where you came from because it wasn't always this rosy. Yeah, it wasn't. I remember Rich has a lyric. He says, um, oh, what's that lyric? He says, um, what song? I might be able to remember the bar. Oh, I can't remember the, the song. It was, oh, I think it was a freestyle. It used to be the miracle. Oh. Was it a fire in a booth freestyle? The one they do with Avelino? Nah, it was a, maybe it was a 32 freestyle. But it says, it says that something, you used to need a miracle, now I'm the miracle. Mm. Um, now, and, and just the idea of coming from that place of seeing it, you see what you want to help out with what you're you just can't. You're just not yeah, in a position. In that moment, you feel helpless. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not within your power right now to solve right that. Now. But you know that the goal, at some point when that comes back around again, you'll be able to do that. And yeah. I feel like that's, that's very important. And it's such a, it's mad. With a lot of, I would say with a, a lot of young black males, it's such a hidden driving force. So if, yeah. you, ask, if you ask them, they won't immediately say that. Mm. But if you dig deeper, yeah, all all these things that we're doing and striving for, it's literally for them, it's for Facts. our parents 100%. that they will be okay, and yeah, then yeah. for us, you know what I'm saying. Matt, um, tell me, what does your mum mean to you? What, how much does your mum mean to you? Oh, bro, that's my world, man. That's <laughs> my reason. That's my everything. Mm. I mean, so I think how can I? So my dad left my mum when I was three. Mm. And she has been a single mother ever since then, you know. So ever since then, it's just been me and her until a little later on, my sister came along, you know. And I think for me, just seeing what she's been able to sacrifice, I think I remember one time she quit a job at like, I think 44. Wow. And she'd been working at this place for a long time. And just to see that she didn't have no fear, bro. She was like, they're not treating me right, I'm leaving. Hmm. And most people I know, I know, I don't know many people at 44 that would leave an establishment. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? With no security as well. She hadn't applied for a new job or anything like that. She just left it and be like, this is not for me. I was like, how are you going to? She's like, don't worry, son, God will provide. And rightly so, God did provide a new job. But I would never want to put my mum in that position ever again. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, mm -hmm. she, yeah, she means the world, man. I think anyone that doesn't love their mother is seriously lacking a soul somewhere. But, you know what I mean? But, yeah, that's... That goes without saying. Mm. Easy. For you, and you're Nigerian, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free and free. And there's like, there's a typical rhetoric that happens with Nigerian parents and that there's this gap and there's this distance between parents and the children. Mm. But you, you with your mum, has such like a close, close bond that you speak to her about anything and everything. Mm. How is that formed? How was that formed? And, and kind of nurtured over time i'm a firstborn so it was always going to be that you know what i mean i think i mean even my sister even says it all the time like i am her favorite or whatever but i don't <laughs> i don't think i'm necessarily a favorite i think 
there's just a uniqueness between mother and son. I think for me, on earth, that's the strongest bond ever. Period. I, someone might think that might be wrong. I think mother and son is the strongest bond ever because I feel like that connection there, a mother knows when a son's feeling a type of way and vice versa, do you know what I'm trying to say? So mm. I think that has always been coupled with the fact that she's the first woman in my life. Do you know what I mean? The first woman that I knew to love or do you know what I'm gonna say so I think that direct relationship was stemmed over time and she's seen me grow. Do you know what I mean? She's seen me grow from teenager boy to a man, do you know what I'm trying to say? So mm. it's always those levels that you see and it's like she doesn't judge you, she loves you completely. Like okay. how many people do you know on this earth that loves you unconditionally? You can't really name any, can you? So yeah, that's that that goes without saying. Yo, there's some people in here, boy. Rebecca Judge, <laughs> hey, Morgan, Rebecca. <laughs> gorgeous hair. Like, yo, big up people, man. Love, love, love. Has there ever been a moment of falling out? With mum? Mm. Yeah. 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 There was a mum still. <laughs> Teenager years. We were pretty. It wasn't my fondest moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really my fault. But what can you do? Adolescent, young boy mm. growing up in London, um, environment, surroundings, yeah. lack of money. What do you do? What's yeah. your outsource? What's your, where am I building all this? Where am I going to release all this bent up frustration? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Where, where, how was I going to do that? Yeah. And naturally, when you can't really handle your emotions at such a young age and, yeah, you know I mean, it's, it's, you're going to bound, you're bound to have some clashes for sure. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Um, there's a quote that you've said in the interview, you said, when mum believes in you, you don't need any other conviction. Facts. I love that. I Facts. love that. Um, and when you told your mum, you know, you want to do presenting and kind of walking that path, she was all guns blazing. Prayed for you to be on TV a couple of months after yeah. that, you're on TV. What does it mean to have a parent in your corner, like backing you? What kind of power I, pack does that put in your back? I, I tell you this, I think it would have been very much harder to still stay on the course of what this journey means to be a presenter. Um, to do what I do and know for the fact that you might not always get paid. There's a lot of free, mm. freelance stuff. Um, to have someone understand that and realise that, yo, this is what I love unconditionally. Um, and to see me just work tirelessly at night, sometimes you just come into my room and be like, what are you doing? And I'm working. And she can see the work yeah. or the love and the passion that I have for this. You know what I'm trying to say? So I think it means a lot because... I know sometimes my cousins or my aunties and uncles, they might have feel differently about their sons, my cousins and stuff. So it would just be completely different for me. Whereas I think at one point when you, when you get so locked in and you decide that this is your path, it doesn't really matter. But the fact that I know that she had, I have that support true. is different. Do you know what I'm going to say? It's because it, so it sort of has that, okay, <laughs> you're not really trying to be a rebel. I'm going to do what I want to do. But you don't have to be a rebel no more because she's kind of been like, all right, cool, I accept it. I accept that this is your journey. Yeah. I'm going to pray for you. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's man. beautiful. Um, you mentioned, you know, your dad left that free. Yeah. For, for you, when was there that awareness that, okay, my, my dad's not actually here. My dad's not actually in my life. Mm -hmm. Probably around eight, nine. Wow. Eight, nine. I think, yeah, it's very young, isn't it? You can see it, like, there's no man around the house, bro. Yeah. No one there. It's just mum. All the time, yeah. mum, 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 mum. <laughs> All the time. You'd ask her, like, where's your dad? Like, no answer. <laughs> what would she say? Would she just pump, push it off? I was, it I was an inquisitive child. I still am an inquisitive person. Anyway, like, I like to ask questions naturally in conversations. Mm -hmm. Even when I just meet people, because I feel like um, if someone's in your presence, like, just, you know what I mean? Just find out a bit, a bit more about them, what makes them tick and stuff. And, Naturally, I'm a good judge of character, but I think for me, it was just like, yeah, where is he like? And there was no answer. And that for me, even at that point, you knew that there was a problem. There wow. was an issue, there's something wrong there. Some of it doesn't click. Because it's not like I didn't have examples of family who had a male, a, a, a white mum, yeah. and my cousin. Do you know what I'm going to say? I had that. I didn't have that in mind. So, yeah. yeah. And was there, when was there, when did that transition from Awareness to harboring. Where's um, one minute? The emotion is immediately start. after, to be fair, man, because I'm not going to lie to you, I resented my dad for a long time. Mm. He showed me what not to do, let's just say that. And mm. I think from a young age, I made a vow that even if I'm not in a relationship or even if I'm not married, but 
if I, if I ever had that encounter with a woman and she has my child, I'm going to be there to the end mm. because I know what it's like to not have someone there. And I tell you, it's probably the worst feeling ever because you have so much questions as a man growing up that only so much answers that your mum can give you. Yeah. That's why I rate single mothers. I rate them highly. The job that, the work that they have to do, unmatched. Mm. You know what I mean? Unmatched. But then they again, got, got I, sh I shine some light to some single fathers too. Because that might be a nuance and it might not be spoken about, but there are some single fathers out there for sure, 100%. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. You came to a place a couple of years ago where you was able to have a conversation, forgive him. Mm. And, as, and as many people and there are many young males in that position where they're like, no, nah, I'll never. I'll never get to that place. I'll never allow myself to get to that place where I say I forgive you or I understand. Yeah. What led you to that place of forgiveness? What led you to that place of understanding? Because the, the harboring of... I don't think people understand. Harboring hate in your heart is heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. Damn. It's heavy on your shoulders, on your mind, in your soul. You feel it. Like, it's not something that is, for example very easy to walk around with because sometimes you might just start arguments for no reason why there was no yeah. need do you know what i mean i think just learning to to love yourself more and learning to let go but also forgiveness is not me you know forgiveness is not really about them you know? it's mainly for you <laughs> it's mainly for you so you can move on and be better yeah. and understand that okay this is not how you want to move so i yeah. can't fault him for his mistakes like it's not my do you know what I mean? We're all going to meet our maker one day. But for me, it was just like, all right, I'm not allowing you to have that power over me anymore. It stops today. Do you know what I'm going to say? And that's what it is. Like, when you harbour hate or any of that, it just carries such a heavy burden, bro. Like, it's long. It's so long. Mm -hmm. The moment you let that go, you're free. Your mood's different. Your vibe's different. Your energy's different because your mind's not on it and you don't have it in your heart no more. And then you could, you're open. You're open to all forms of friendships, all forms of life. And you're able to see things and appreciate someone else that might have their, you know what I mean, their dad in mm. their life. And you can just see that and just be like, I respect that because there's yeah. not many men like that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, That's deep. Andrew. My friend, uh, you know, Mar uh, do you know um, Marvin Harrison? Marvin From, Harrison, um, I think you ring the bell. Don't, don't black dad? I think so. I think so. Because um, he was on here, we had a conversation and, and he talked about a psychological concept where parents have to symbolically mm. <laughs> symbolically have to kill their parents and mm. what that means is killing the perception and the concept they have of them being a father and a mother that mm. that grandiose abstract kind of thing where you yeah. know everything you are perfect and when you mm. cure that perception of them and realize that right they're, not, they're actually they're just humans that yeah. sometimes get it right and sometimes get yeah. it wrong yeah. Forgiveness becomes easier because you're like, mm. well, boy, whatever things you were dealing with there may have been too much. And you yeah, may yeah, have yeah. felt that that was the end of it. You had to leave. You couldn't manage mm. it. Um, but it is, it's a long road for some people. But just for like sure. I said, I think it's a road that once you get to the end of it, like mm. you said, you become a whole, whole new person. Definitely. For sure. Um, you said it kind of will feed into how you are as a parent. What do you what do you look forward to in parenthood? If, if it's I'm not gonna lie, someone said this about me. I don't know if it was gonna be true, <laughs> but I do feel like it probably might be. I think I might be. I might just be a girl dad. To be fair, like okay. I had some fathers of strange reason. I'm a, girl. I'm, a, I'm a girl dad. Oh yeah, I was yeah, six, yeah. Six, 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 six. Yeah, someone for some strange reason, someone I used to see was like, "You're gonna be a girl dad," and I was like, "Well, I don't know why you think that that would be me." I can but see it. I can see it as well. I hear it still, like, it is what it is. I think it's an exciting moment, but I want to... Mm. I've always said that I want to go to that point when I'm ready, but then when mm. is someone actually ready to be a dad, though? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, how can you prepare for something that you completely have no experience in? There isn't a crash course on how to be a dad. You can't... Do you know what I'm going to say? Like, there isn't something like that. You're literally at the beck and call of this newborn baby... And it's your duty to keep this baby alive. Do you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> scary, scary. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it's, it's, it's a part of life, though, man. Like, a part of your legacy, which is something that's very big on me, leaving a legacy, um, 
comes in the form of having a child as well, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I was having a conversation with my friend today, uh, Big Up Toby, and I was just like, obviously, I don't know if I'd ever say to my child that they should go into the creative field because I know what I had to do to kind of get to the position that I, to be in the position that I am today. And I'm still not even reached the goals that I want to reach yet for my career. But I remember something that's so profound that she gladly point out is that she just wanted to have that, wanted her child to have that nepotism where she can just mention her name and be like, okay, you're usher in. And let's be honest, that's what the industry is really and truly like, who you know, who, who's going to back for you, who's going to yeah. be in those positions where, you know what I'm trying to say, like, just be able to just give you that coast through and just, you know, 100%. be like, like yeah, yeah, just let's do up, up and stuff. Yeah, man, 100%. 100%. You know, I, speak, I think two weeks before I was going to have my daughter, <clears throat> I was speaking to uh, Eddie, Eddie Caddy. And okay, he, he, big up Eddie, had, man, I love him, man. I love him, because like he had a daughter, he had his daughter as well. Yeah. I was like, bro, I don't know, like... I feel like you said, I don't know how to do this thing and how do you be a father? And he said, bro, and it really helped me. He said, the ability is within you. Mm. It just needs the opportunity to present itself. Yeah. The, ability, the ability to be a father, to nurture, to love, yeah. and to guide, to direct, to reprimand. We need, it's, all, it's all built into the machine. It's yeah, just yeah, that yeah. it needs that opportunity to do so. So will we ever be ready? Ain't no one ready. But just know that when it comes, just yeah. like clockwork, your body will... It's so weird for me. It just... It's weird. It just turns on. <laughs> it just turns on. It switches on. Yeah. Um, I want to take it to secondary school. Secondary school, you've talked about in the past, being a big kid. Yeah. And I wanted to ask about... how you, in, in those times in secondary school, how you saw your body image to how you see it now, and if you have any adult residue from that time? <laughs> it's a loaded question. 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 That is a question. Um, so, so, yeah, I was obviously, I, I was a chunky kid, but I was a chunky kid that still had a bit of confidence, if that made sense. Because... Yeah, I was, I was a chunky kid. I had a bit of confidence. Um, my family, who was my family, was um, in the streets. Uh, they did what they did. But ultimately, it was also... Yeah, I didn't really... I enjoyed being a kid. Like, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Trust like, me. Playing out, having fun, kicking ball. Like, I enjoyed being a kid. My... my um, I won't call it obesity, because I wasn't that big. But my my heaviness wasn't... It didn't, still, it didn't stop me from having fun. Okay. And I, I wasn't looked frowned upon in the sense of where, oh, like, you're big, like, da 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 Like, how people look at people when you're not vaccinated or something like that. Like, it's some um, mad thing. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Like, stupid <laughs> people, honestly. Um, but um, it wasn't like that. But ultimately, I just feel like I knew that there was something wrong with my body because, obviously, I would see my cousins and they would look completely different to me. Wow. They'd be very slim, very toned, very muscular, very different. And I knew that's something that I always wanted to have, but probably just didn't have the opportunity to have it at that point in time. Damn. As I grow, as I grew up, completely changed. So yeah, how I see my body now is always going to be continuous work in progress because there's certain things that I definitely want to have for myself. But I think for me, the because I have the idea of um, knowing that if I put the if I practice these uh, discipline and these moves and eat right, I can eventually get what it is that I want, basically. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, obviously, if you talk to me about discipline back then, I'm a kid. I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not happening. I'm trying to have fun. I'm trying to just live my life, to be fair. Mm. But, yeah, as you get older, you realise that how there's a bit of sacrifice there that can just get you to the point. But I think, yeah, in life, 16, I had a growth spurt. So that just kind of destroyed all my kind of fatness because I was very <laughs> active at that age. Basketball, yeah. football, I was just active. I was just on it on it, wanted to be active, wanted to be everywhere, wanted to be, yeah, I was just heavy on, on being active from 16 years okay. um, You as a person, <clears throat> as you've grown up now, you've talked about, I've seen in interviews, you've talked about being aware of who you are. Yeah. And the power that you have as a person. 
the influence mm -hmm. you have as a person. So you're aware of who you are in different spaces, the things you say, the things you do, yeah. because also there's a brand that you have to protect. There's a brand that needs um, uh, elevation at different levels. And so the way mm -hmm. you manage that is important. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I wondered, have you ever been afraid of saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing? Um, and how do you balance that against remaining true and, and authentic to yourself? Balancing a brand, but also being true and authentic to yourself. Another load of questions. You came prepared today, bro. <laughs> You're coming for me, man. You're coming for me. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, God help me. <laughs> I think, number one, I viewed myself as a person first before I viewed myself as a brand. Okay. It's only when I stepped into the social media world that I started to see that being a brand came with pros and cons. It came with, you know what I mean? But it also aligned me with the fact that I needed to understand what my purpose is. Why am I here? What am I doing? Why am I doing this for? Yeah. Um, and if I could always answer those kind of questions, I knew that I was going to be all right. Because naturally, generally to my core, I'm a friendly person. Mm. Uh, I'm cool to talk to. There's nothing you can't really have a conversation with. And I don't treat, I don't walk into a room thinking that I'm better than anyone. I walk in as myself. And that mm. myself is just confident from the back. That you can yeah. see that you can feel that that's just me. Um, I don't shower or cower from no one or no being or entity. I just feel like we're all here for a reason. We're all here to serve. And we're all here to just really be um, inspiration to one another and to understand that, yo, like, your path could change like that. Do you know what I mean? If, you're, if you mess up, your brand could be, like, crushed overnight. And it may have taken you years to build up, but it could crash overnight. Um, and, yeah, obviously, integrity is quite a big thing for me. I think... And anytime I've never been, not to say I've never been in a position where my, my integrity has ever been questioned or has to be compromised, but I know for a fact that if I was ever to be in that position, I know what I'm doing. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I know how I need to move. Yeah. Um, and yeah, people can always form their opinions of you. That doesn't mean that's going to be true. Yeah. But just take it on board that obviously when you step out your house, uh, the people that care about you the most, which is your mum and your sister, um, they, you don't want them to find something on the news saying that you've done this or done that, that's just not really to the person that they grew up with and they know. I feel like that's when you've lost your way, you know what I'm going to say? And I think, obviously, faith is number one for me, keeping God first and and, and line that. I'm not afraid to speak about God in any room. I'm not afraid to showcase that I have a love for God and the fact that I'm here today because of him. So I think, yeah, that's that's always going to be a good tool to like, navigate this crazy world that we live in. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. Um, you said in a tweet, um, I just had my first therapy session and Ooh. I cried. Yeah. Mad ting. Yeah. And um, I started therapy last year. Almost, okay. can't say, almost can't say a year now. Mm. And, um, pff, pff, well, well, it? Therapy. Yo, oh, big up the people in there, man. Gina the mover. <laughs> big up Bissy. My brother. Bissy Atkins, my sis. Trust yeah, me. man, love. Thank you guys for tuning in still. Yes, yeah, overwhhelming, bro. How has it been for you? Therapy is like one of the most, for me, beautiful God sends ever. Um, why did you go to therapy and how has it been? My sister. Number mm. one, my sister. She was the reason. Um, she started therapy in lockdown through the NHS. And I noticed her behaviour and how it changed. Because wow. obviously, lockdown, you can't go anywhere. So I was her direct point of contact in terms of communication and just having conversations. And she would willingly just come into my room, start having conversations about any and everything. But more so, she started to open up about her childhood and how I was like to her, towards her, and how it was tough being the sister wow. of someone that was quote unquote light. So, you know what I mean? Just, just, just tough for her. And probably sometimes she felt neglected. Probably sometimes she didn't feel like I heard her out. Um, and I think I can understand it. I understood it from her perspective because I was just like, all right, cool. But I'm, I appreciate you opening up to me and I appreciate you saying this to me. But I need you to understand one thing. You know I'm not that person anymore because you've obviously seen that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? You, you can see the growth yourself. So, um, yeah, my therapy was overwhelming, but it's something that I know that I needed to have in order to kind of, kind of unlock a, a new level of awareness, but also and emotional awareness as well that I feel like I probably did not actually have had I not gone to therapy. 
Yeah. And that for me was quite key because I know for myself, moving forward, when I do obviously get into a relationship or I'm seeing someone, um, I can be able to empathise with how they're feeling in any moment. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, therapy was very key for me and it just made me see things from a different angle. Yeah, 100%. Cheers, man. And it's like you said, even you stepping into a relationship, it will, it will carve out a new version of Samuel in relationships. Facts. Facts. And as I've kind of discovered, in parenthood, it carves out a new... It unlocks, even unlocks a new level of parenting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Because Imagine. I'm still trying to undo the past and what I've learned yeah. cultur culturally, experientially. Yeah, yeah. And so now, when I parent, I've got to ask myself, who is parenting? Is it my dad that's parenting right now? Is it my uh, mum? Is it my mm. friend's advice? Yeah. Is it something I saw on YouTube? Or mm. is it me? Mm. Is it me? So, for example, my daughter at the moment, she won't sleep through the whole of the night. She'll wake up. And How old is she, by the way? Two. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. And, she, and she'll come to our room. Now, we've been told, you know, take her back to her room, let her sleep, take her back to her room, let her sleep. Yeah. Bruh, bruh, that gets tiring. <laughs> so <laughs> she's, got, <laughs> she's got like a pillow and, um, and a cover next to our bed on the floor. Yeah. And the first couple of times she would come and then she would go and lie on, in the bed, not in our mm. bed, but on the mm. floor. Mm. Pff, bruh, culturally, hey, my head was spinning. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to think that she can just come and sleep in our bed. I don't want her to think that on my days. You know, she's first going to sleep in her bed. But therapy has taught me, you know, you've got to, after you lift up all those layers of yeah. culture, parents, all, you get to understand, okay, what is the right thing to do in this situation? What's going to yeah, help you sleep? What's yeah. going to help me, me and my wife sleep is her laying down right beside us. Yeah, if she yeah. sleeps, yeah. Cool. She's not going to grow up to be some wayward child or whatever. So yeah, yeah. this therapy has so many uh, far-reaching benefits that, you know, I, you, you and other people are trying to be such advocates of it because I think we need it. There's Especially so for many black things. men. Especially for uh, black men. I think number one, black men. I don't 100%. think black, and black women, can speak <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong on this, I don't think they have ever I have a problem with them going to see a therapist and actually speaking. Mm. And I mean that in a small proportion of them that actually do go out and actually speak to them because there might be still black women out there that actually do not want to speak to a therapist. Yeah. But I know for a fact it's quite heavy in the black community in terms mm. of the male perspective. For them to open up to another therapist or another person that they do not know sure. um, can be quite challenging. can be quite challenging. But for me, I've never shied away from a challenge. I feel like challenges is the only way you can grow. 100%. Yeah. Um, you are someone who <clears throat> when I look on the outside looking in you are a you're not a perfectionist but you're you're someone who's committed to excellence if I'm going to do it mm. I'm going to do it at the highest highest yeah. level Yeah. and in your presenting in your interviewing um, you know, from time to time, you've talked about research and, 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 and practicing the art, learning yeah. about the art. Yeah. We've, we've presented, we've interviewed, and in the entertainment spirit, what have you learned, especially about the, the art of presenting and the art of interviewing, what have you learned from your research? You can never be over-researched. You can never be over-prepared. Mm. You can never be... You can be under-prepared. That's <laughs> always the thing. You can never be over-prepared. Um, <laughs> And I feel like, I think something that people don't actually tell you, whether it be interviews or presenting or hosting or whatever it is that you're doing, be in the moment, man. You've prepared so long for this, being in the moment. Because it's not sometimes that something that you have planned or thought out in your head goes according to plan. You have to be willing to adapt and adjust quickly. Very quickly. Because you want to be able to capture this moment and not only make it memorable for yourself, but make it memorable for whoever it is you're interviewing or whatever space that you're in and people can see that. Yeah. They will see that, they will appreciate that, they will respect that and most importantly, they'll remember that. And mm. that's what I've always wanted. It's, above all else, 
is to be able to be remembered. Because I feel like for me, if you have a lasting effect on people's mind, they will always remember how you've either treated them, mistreated them, or how you've made them felt during an interview. And that's always been key for me. Anyone that I've interviewed, I've wanted you to be there. And I've done my work. And I've made sure that I've tried to make your interviews different than to any others. Do you know what I mean? I try not to watch too much of other stuff, but I would watch enough to know that, okay, I'm not asking this question, or I can rephrase this question that can come across differently. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm going to, when I rephrase it differently, I know I'm going to get a new answer. An answer that you probably might not have thought of. And um, I just like research because I I remember when I had one with Pop, um, uh, I was going to say Pop Smoke. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't get a chance to do with Pop Smoke, didn't but they, I didn't get a chance to do with Pop Smoke. Um, oh, what's his name again? Oh, this is going to bug me. Not Pop Smoke. Um, oh, what is it? All Smoke. Uh, All smoke. It's something Smoke. Smoke Pup. That's it. Smoke Pup. That's, smoke it. Pup. that's <laughs> the guy. So, yeah. Sorry, Smoke Pup. I forgot you for a second, but yeah, I remember you. Um, there was one, one thing that we worked on, me and my cameraman at the time, and we was doing research and we was collecting and come back. It was a collaborative effort on that one. And I remember there was something quite key that he was able to find out that I was able to use. And I, I was like, wow, this is quite interesting. Mm. But let me bring it up just to make, make sure that he knows that we're aware that he did mm. this. And that was when he wrote the lyrics to Lil Pump's verse um, for um, I Love It with Kanye West. Mm. And he was like, how do you know that? I was like, we do our research. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I made sure that I gave my camera guy the credit for because I was like, I never take ownership or credit for anything else that I haven't done. But again, mm-hmm. it was a collaborative effort. But I remember that for me just added another new layer of where there's there's still more research that you can do. You can never mm-hmm. be over research. You can never be so over true. Research, for sure. So true. And and during interviews, is there is there a moment where because, you know, let's take that Tory Lane's example, seven minutes. You've had seven mm-hmm. minutes prior. <clears throat> so you've known this person from afar, like, yeah. for years. Now you're actually interviewing them. Mm. What tips do you use or what things do you use to get that immediate report? Because you don't know them. You don't know them from anywhere. <clears throat> so is there a moment where you're like, okay, let me ask them this? Or is there a moment mm. where it just slips in and it's easy? How do you get that rapport so quickly? I think ultimately I just have a conversation that turns into an interview later. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think being able to communicate and communicate well is a skill within itself. Mm. Uh, but without communications, nothing, without communication, nothing will get done. People will always misunderstand and misconstrued how you're probably trying to present an, um, a question or information or freedom things. And I think for me, it's just trying to have a conversation before you actually step on, before the cameras are even on. How are you? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and I feel what, one thing I really lack about it is like when I used to do proper, proper press ones where there would be a location and they would have a, an artist in a room, but he would go through several press. Jeez. And I'd always just poke fun at this and be like, you must be tapped up by now, isn't it? And they would always laugh when I mentioned that because <laughs> they understand that I know that you've probably been, you know what I mean? You had a few guests in there, had a few people just bombard you with questions and you're probably bored right now or you probably don't even want to do this interview no more and I hear it but anytime I've mentioned that that always lightens up the mood because it's like you get it like you understand Mm -hmm. and for me it'll be like all right cool I know the next person that walks in I don't know about them but right now I know you you've given me your time and I know you appreciate it and I know you're clued up because it's like all right cool there's that human side that you connect to yeah. Forget you as the artist or this, that, and the third. But there's certain things I know we can communicate and connect on a human, human level. level. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, like, especially, I like to always ask artists when they've come from abroad, what's the most famous thing you've heard about London? And so sometimes with that, the tea, tea and biscuits oh, or where gosh. you go for lunch and stuff, I try to recommend places for them. And sometimes they have come back and be like, yo, this place was dope, thank you. Do you know what I mean? Just go that extra mile because they'll always remember that that's what you did for them. I'm done today. So yeah, you just got to find unique ways of how to make you remembered and your interview just interesting enough yeah. so that they give you just more because then they gave it other person. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also it's like I've always had a combination of where sometimes my interviews would have run on and they've actually stopped the person, be like, 
your time's up. You'll be like, no, nah, we've got a couple more minutes. I still want to continue this because they're enjoying themselves. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? And I feel like for me, that is that means you've done your job right. Yes. That notion to be like, I'm going to stop my PA to be like, we can give him another two or three more questions because I really like how this is going and I want to see this through. That means you've done your job right. That means they, they remember you for sure. Come on. Um, you talked about um, in the past internships. You've done, done so many internships. Mm -hmm. um, what, in a, in a day and age now where a lot of people are about what can, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? Internships mm -hmm. are about what I can do for them and what mm -hmm. service I can. What is the best approach to taking internships now uh, and getting them? Because obviously everybody wants them in different places. How can you stand out? And what is the best approach to take when you're there? I think you see with the internship, yeah. I think we have so much access to social media that people need to start using it for the right reasons. It's wow. a tool to propel you in any direction you see fit. Mm. So if an internship has come out with Google, or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, what have you, um, and you want to get in there, I suggest you approach that with the full sense of where not only are you going to work hard, um, but try to look at what other campaigns have done. Research comes into that, but also taking on your own initiative to be like starting your own thing and seeing how you can navigate that space in your own world where there is no rules and restrictions, no companies, the driving force behind you. This is purely you and mm. seeing how you work well with that, what levels you can kind of ascertain from that that you go into that because when you get through the door and you have an interview and you have a meeting with them because your application has gone through that process, that's the first barrier. Yeah. Now you want to leave a lasting effect. Yeah. Now, if you come to them and be like, okay, so let's just say TikTok, for example, which is the biggest social media, sorry, Instagram, um, right now, um, you want to go there being like, okay, if they ask you, have you even got a TikTok? And you say no, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. So that's, a, do you know what I mean? Just do things that you know that's going to be practical. Yeah. Yes, have your TikTok ready. Have you done stuff? Yeah, because obviously TikTok always do trends. Get on the mm -hmm. trends. So to be like, at least, even if it's not a mass in a mass amount of views, they can see that you're active. Like, they can see that you're doing things. They can see that, mm -hmm. bro, he's actually being quite creative with this stuff. He just probably isn't getting the right traction at this yeah. point in moment in time. That shows initiative, which mm -hmm. any internship will always look for because it means that you can think on your feet. They yeah. don't have to baby you or cuddle you. And you can present ideas that mm. they might not have thought of. Yeah. And I feel like that's the whole point of an internship. Think outside the box. Because they're not willing to do what you're willing to do. My whole thing is, okay, if I've got six months, if I'm gone anyway, brother, you're going to remember me. I'm going to think of a campaign or yeah. pitch or whatever to make you think, yeah, this guy's on point. Mm. And then let's say they did let you go, but they created a space or created a role for you because you were so sick on that internship. And that's happened to quite a few of my friends who I know quite well in the industry now that that's happened for. So yeah, 100%. Love that, love that. Love that. Um, you Hi, mentioned Becky. That, oh, Becky, uh, big up Becky. Uh, yeah, you Becky. mentioned that um, in a tweet, you said, for me, giving up is way harder than trying given up yeah, it's way it. harder and it's trying and then you said um god's god plays a big part in my journey for sure and mm. any journey that we're embarking on is going to be full of ups and downs and, and mm. diff difficulties here and there but again looking out from the outside in you look like mm. someone who is dogged in your determination a bulldog determination mm. to succeed like you will mm. not let go you just won't let go um and i wanted to ask you, you know how does that combine with your faith how has your faith helped you along that journey and, and bro that's that... faith alone man that mm. is faith alone bro i'm telling you but when i see it yeah whenever i do research on people that i respect and admire but if their journeys has not been spick and span 50 cent journey do you know what i mean like I don't know if people know this, but he's actually originally from New York, but he got blocked out of every label. Why? Because mm. of Ja Rule and Ving. They was not letting him 
Even though the labels were like, um, they know he's hard, but at the time, Ja Rule was the guy. So <laughs> anything he said went. So imagine going to all the labels and them all turning you away. And you know something, up. he had to go across the pond to LA. Obviously, Eminem stumbled across his tape and was like, yo, come over to this side. I want to bring you through. Jay-Z caught wind and he was like, listen, 50 Cent's coming out in two months. If you lot ain't prepared, it was <laughs> pissed. He came out in the club. Bang. Well, yeah. And that was pure determination of him just surviving the streets, <clears throat> getting shot, having a baby mum as well. I haven't gone through half of what he's had to go through to even just make it through and get that single on the way. But I think the difference is, it's just, bro, you never know when your time is. And if you give up, you're never going to know. <laughs> you're never going to know. Well, that's, that's definitely guaranteed. If you give up, you're never going to know. But mm. if you keep going, and I like to think I've definitely made progress in my journey. Um, yeah, you just become undeniable, bro. They just can't help it. They're just going to have to give you a slot and be like, yo, we just seen how hard you work, man. We love what you do. Yeah, man. Here's what, what do you want? What's the yeah. what do, do you know what I'm trying to say? I look forward yeah. to that day. But yeah, 100%. I think, and I think you just have to have a love of just learning. Mm -hmm. like you have to have a love of just learning if one thing's not working try another one if another thing's not working try another one like I think Last Dance really helped me because that came out in lockdown innit Ooh. and that was just such a bro I had to watch that like two three times because I'm <laughs> like bro this guy was just relentless relentless like he was just so on it I'm like bro how do you do you know what I mean how do you just keep going bro you're not even phased by one championship two championships three championship you're still with that mentality, like, no, I've got to get more. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't feel like I've even progressed to the heights of my peers have been. Like, people like, I'm not even going to say names, but they know, they know who they are. But I know for a fact, I definitely deserve to be spoken about it because mm -hmm. if I was ever shit, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. This okay. industry is very doggy dog, and they will let you know if you weren't cutting it, bro. Trust me. Yeah. So, How do you... I know it's almost time, but... And you mentioned it before about the industry and, and, and how do you manoeuvre in this doggy, 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 doggy industry, shady at times, but mm -hmm. still keep your integrity and still not succumb to some of those kind of moves, especially when you see sometimes those are the moves people take to get up the ladder. How do you still remain true to you? You know, it's so funny. Last year, I, I probably had quite a couple of failures. Um, I took them on the chin, I, I rolled through. And I remember one of my boys telling me this, that there was a lot of stuff happening. And he said this profound statement. And I was like, rah, like, you really believe what you just said to me right now? And he was like, bro, if you move with integrity in this, in this industry, you're never going to grow. You're never going to mm. grow. And I was like, rah. Wow. But he said that, like, I, like he really believed that. <laughs> he really believed that. So I now must move a certain way that I know I'm not comfortable with in my skin in order to just to make it. What does making it look like to, at that point then if I do do that? 100K on Instagram? TikTok? Twitter? Or 200K? Getting a wow. brand deal there or a side deal there? or Yeah, I've got the income, but how are you going to live with yourself, bro? Like, What have you done to actually get to that place? Hmm. And I feel like for me, I like authenticity because I can always read that. It's not. It's not hard to be and if it takes you longer, then cool. But when you get there, and you will get there, cool. Jay-Z dropped his first album at 26. 26. Them times, he said he was too old to be a rapper. That's what the industry told him. Crazy. Too old to be a rapper, bro. Excuse my profanity, but really F what people might claim as this, that, and the third. I feel like it's really good to be a real person, just moving with authenticity. Mm. No hate, no malice in your heart. Because at least at the end of the day, if I ever do, if I ever did give up, I can walk away with my hands high knowing that I didn't screw no one over. I didn't talk bad about no one behind no one's back. That's not me. Do you know what I mean? You would never hear my name in that kind of mixer because that's just not my character. Yeah. But I think what's very important is that when you do make it there, it's so good to be wholesome. And a perfect example of that from what I've seen firsthand is more the comedian. That's my like, brother. Yeah, like I've got the ultimate love for Mo because That's what Mo shows me is just like you can have this and still yes. be a good person. Come on, man. Still be a really good person. 
Trust me. And that for me is authentic. I, I remember the interview that we did, and even though it didn't amass a mad amount of views, I remember his PA was in the room at the time. She was like, that's one of his best interviews he's ever had. Beautiful. Beautiful. And I remember him saying that as well, like, you really dig that like, what I do, like you proper appreciating it. And for me, that meant the world because I was like, bro, you're, you're sick. Do you know what I mean? So that coming from you, respect. Yeah. <laughs> and I prepared, like, my cameraman on that day knew, like, I was on point that day, like, mm. on point. It's a shame he didn't get the views, but you don't do it for the views. You do it for the fact that that's on your notch, that's going on your show reel. You've got that there. So if there's mm. any, like, no one can't say I can't attract the big names. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because I've proven that over time. Um, but I think ultimately it's just yeah. When you move with authenticity, bro, mm. like it will, the world will move for you. Yes. These things that this is what God has really taught us and really embedded in our heart. Just really be a good person. Like it's mm. not hard. It's not yeah. the hardest. Thing to do. <laughs> Take yeah. your time with everything. Understand patience. Understand when it's your time. It is your time. Time. Do not feel envy or jealous of anyone else that you might feel like have surpassed you in any way, shape, or form. When it comes to you, just be ready to run with the baton and lead and make room for other people. Shout out on other people because that's what Mo has taught me. To mm. me, Mo is at the top of what this presenting game is. Sure. TV, all of that stuff, own show, commission for third or fourth season. That is really at someone that's really at the peak of his powers, bro. Mm. Still shining light on the other comedians. Still bringing through acts. Still put through the composers, making sure that they were the one who wanted the all black um, group to be the ones that set off the, the show. Very important. All these little nuances that make that sh that shows that this is someone that cares about his community. He does it, and lead by example. When you're in that position, do the same. Yeah, do the same. Love it. Your last question, bro. You ready? You haven't used your yeah, pass man. card. Hit me. You haven't, hit, you haven't used your pass card once. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's your last question is, do you have a question for me? Yeah, bro. You do? Why are you say that fast? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you ready? Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's simple, though. All right, go ahead. Why do you do what you do? Why the platform? <laughs> Why interview these people? Like, and I don't mean, I don't want to even to sound like what's in it for you, but why do you mm. do what you do? Because... You could you could have picked anything else. You could have yeah, done anything true. else. You could have <laughs> decided to create a platform and interview a different batch of people. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Just do something different. You know what I mean, could have gone on to NFTs and do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> do what you do, bro. Why do you do what you do? I, do you I, know what? I think it's twofold. I think, one, I feel everyone has a story, bro. Everyone mm -hmm. has. And I think, like you said, when you get into situations and you're around people and you talk to them, yeah. it is shocking mm -hmm. what people's stories are. But mm -hmm. they're standing right next to you and you would never have known uh, if you didn't ask them and they didn't get to share it. So I think yeah. everyone has a story that is powerful and can be learned from. And so I want to present that to people. Mm -hmm. But then especially within the black community, this is not a predominantly, it's not, this is not a black brand. But I do feel that in the black community, we don't hear our stories. We mm. don't get to hear about them until maybe they've passed away. Or whatever. There's stories that are living there that people can learn from, be empowered and inspired. Mm. And I want, to, I want to tell them. I want those stories to be put on a pedestal so that people can connect with them. So we do the live mm. events. We've got Shola Amma at the live event. Sick. She, you know, she's from the 90s. Like, a lot of people might not know her. But she's been through a lot. And mm. her story is rich with gems. Mm. The story is rich with gems that people can sit, hear, take, be empowered and inspired. So I do it because everyone has a story that we can learn from. And I mm. think that these stories are worthy of telling. You, you know, on this platform, you don't have to have a million followers or whatever. Just whatever you're doing, if it is empowering and it is inspiring someone, I want to hear that story. Yeah, you know, I want to hear it because every story, I thought every story is worthy uh, to be told. So, yeah, that's why I do it. And every every single conversation, you know, with yourself and so many out yeah. others, it's just be it's just it's beautiful to hear the struggle, yeah. the strength, 
people still on their way, people who have made it, but are still thinking, I still got to achieve. It's a beautiful thing, man. So it's, yeah. the, it's, it's like harnessing the power of stories, and I love it, man. I love it. Okay, I think this one's a bit more personal. Okay. Does fatherhood get any easier? Because I'm, I'm not there yet, but you are. Does it get any easier? Does it get easier? Mm. So I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm two years in. In the first year, I thought, what did I think in the first year? It's funny, in the first year, it was easier, actually. <laughs> because <laughs> cause she was just a baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She gave yeah. me eight hours, eight hours, nice. <laughs> so now as I'm getting older, I'm finding it challenging. Okay. The part that I'm finding challenging is, it's not even her, it's me. Okay. It's me and how I respond to her growth okay. and her development. And is it happening too quickly for you or is it, what, what is it? It's, um, It's because each day, week, month, year, I've never done it before. Ah, oh, okay. So I don't know what I'm doing. I really mm-hmm. have not got a clue about what I'm doing. So, mm-hmm. so, so as each day and each, you know, I might have a week and I thought, yeah, that was a good week. I, I did what, and then the next week will be totally different. I'm like, well, okay, I've got to adjust myself again. So yeah, it's that yeah, shifting yeah. and that understanding that, you know what? For real, for real, nobody really knows how to do this perfectly. What they're thing. doing, yeah. But it is really on the job you're learning. That's why for me, therapy is, is helping because it's helping me process things quicker to respond mm. quicker. So she's okay, two years cool. old. She's going to be three in April. That's a mm. whole other year yeah, that yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be required to be a whole different person. Yeah. A whole different, a different side of me. More empathy, more patience. At the moment, mm. I don't have patience. My thing is patience. Ah. <laughs> my, my thing is patience and shouting. I shout, I shout too much. I think mean, I shout when I don't okay. need to. I can yeah. say it. But culture, I'm still trying to unlearn yeah. that and, and, yeah. and develop what I want to do. So it's a never ending. I definitely feel that that will help you a lot because I, I definitely understand that. Well, the, the methods that my mom used to raise me mm. was not the same methods that she used to raise my sister. Oh. I saw that and I was like, interesting. I didn't understand in a, in it. The, what, how was she with you? A lot more harder. I think mothers with boys are always a lot more harder. I don't, I don't recall any guy that I know that their mom was, you know, so <laughs> in an African household anyway. No, always a lot <laughs> yeah. more harder. With her? Um, she could do no wrong in her eyes. Wow. Literally. Damn. I thought I was, I was fuming. I remember growing up, I was fuming. It's like, why well, you treat her like, you know what I mean? But then I understood that she was the baby of the house. She was the baby of the family. Mm. The attention was no longer on me. It was on her. True. Yeah. You know what I mean? So True. seeing that shift, seeing how she would be quite softer with her. And then plus my mom was older as well. She had me mm. quite young. She was older. So that same energy that she might have had for me was not the same when she had her. Mm. Different type of energy, different type of mindset, different different person. True. You know I mean, so true. Yeah, you just had to again, like I mentioned in the beginning, grace. Mm. Just grace, because people are gonna they're gonna make mistakes, man. They're gonna make mistakes, hundred percent. You need 100%. to give them grace. You need to allow to make that and learn. And like you said, you need to give yourself grace, bro. Because you're still learning, you're still adjusting. Yeah, you're it's true. Man. You making a screen is the best of a new thing for you, a new territory. This is unknown, uncharted territory. Yeah, true. And then what happens when you get a boy? Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, bro, man. Bro, thank you for your time, man. Thank, thank you, man. You thank you for, for doing this. I love yeah, all the everything. people that you've managed to get on on there, man. It's been amazing still. 100%. And, and the sit down that you did with Henry as well, amazing. Oh, um, man, big up no, Henry. Man, incredible, incredible. Love Henry. Wholesome. Oh, wholesome. Gosh. Exactly. Wholesome. And you know, I'm, that's why I'm, I love, you know, when we interview these people, it's a beautiful thing as well because, again, I've got my two year old. My two year old has grown up, and I feel that like she's going to be able to grow up in a culture of 
the Henrys, of the Moes, of the Samuels. Yep. And I can yep. now point. I can point. When I was younger, I didn't really feel like there was many people to point, point to. Mm. But I can point now and I can say, Grace Ladoja, John Bayuga, Samuel mm. Ren, Ramal London. And my tongue will just keep going. Go and check out these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Go, go and research yeah. who they are. Go and research yeah. them. Look at what they've done. And they've done it with authenticity and wholesomeness. I can point yeah. to them now, you know? So mm. that's another beautiful thing because you're like, you're seeing what your children hopefully can have to look up to. You know? For sure. Yeah. Bro, thank you for your time so much. I'm wishing you all you, the best. Um, yeah. we, we, we always say that, you know what, anybody, anybody that crosses this platform, um, they're not just a guest, but they become um, just someone who we champion. So if you mm. post anything, do not be surprised if the first like, the first repost, the first shout out mm. you get is from Thank us. You, because once you cross us, that's it. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. a wrap. Amazing, and, and, amazing. And vice versa. If you're putting out stuff, you're promoting stuff and you just need help, you just fling it our way, we will do what we do, which is what I'm saying. Then, so, I'll, pray, I'll pray I'll have a lot of announcements for you this year. You will, you will, and you will. And you will. For sure, for sure. Thank you, brother. Appreciate no your time. At all. No way, we'll take care. Love. Guys, thank you so much for joining us in 21 Questions with Sam and Any. Um, like I said, we have our live event, 1st of March. If you want to come to a live event where we do similar to this, where we unpack our guests, uh, we're going to have um, Shola Amma, the legendary songstress. Um, you might need somebody. <clears throat> you might need some Yeah, if you want to come through, please click the link in our bio, go to our tickets, get tickets now. Uh, before they sell out. It's going to be an amazing event. Um, you can go onto our website and uh, get tickets. And um, yeah, feel free to come down. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Um, if you want to watch this interview, particularly uh, you came halfway through, you didn't get to watch all of it, don't worry. As soon as we finish now, I'm going to put it on the front page and you can watch it from the beginning to the end. And all we ask, comment below, let us know how you found it and share it. Share it with people you feel could benefit from the things you've heard um, in it. But yeah, thank you to Samuel and thank you to every single person that tuned in. This is the sit down. I am IC and uh, we'll see you on the first. We're going to be back next week with another interview. Um, so follow us so you can stay tuned to find out who it is. All right, take care. God bless.